Today is a beautiful day in Denmark and I'm in this amazing rooftop and I have all the space for me. I'm gonna do my thing, which is seaweed stuff. <laughs> and now I'm gonna dry it. Dry it to preserve it. I want to take the seaweed from here and take it all the way to Spain because I have a very kick-ass microscope there. I want the structures to be kept and I want everything to be kept the way it was when I pick it. Drying time. I'll show you how. Some teasers, something to pull apart tiny pieces of the seaweed. Some scissors. A bowl with water, some cardboard, and some cotton. Thick papers, not very thin, because we submerge it into water. So we don't want the paper to melt down. And then the seaweed will get extended in here. And the queen of the crown, what is it? Some wood with these two in each corner. We're gonna press it down. But I'll show you in a minute. My lovely and sweet ex-partner that gave it to me. That's a very nice proof that someone really knows you. Some seaweed is very delicate. So we want to dry it in the natural shade that they are. But most of the work is done and it's done with the help of the water. Okay, now we're taking it out of the water. Now we have a perfect Ulva Lactuca from Anne Bear ready to be dry. I'm gonna hold it. I maybe put a bit too much water. The tips, the tips are also very important in taxonomy to recognize the individuals. So, we have it. Another one. The most important thing with seaweed is wash it always with salt water. Seaweed is not a real plant in the sense that it doesn't have roots. So it doesn't absorb nutrients from the soil. It does it from the whole surface. If you put them in water which is not salty, they will be very sensible to the change of concentration of salts or amount of salts inside and outside the body and the cells might explode. Literally, they might explode. If you want to conserve the individuals, put salt under the water. We can have seaweed or we can have seagrass like the one I'm showing here what's the difference. Seaweed, as I said, they don't have a root. Seagrass has a root. It's a real plant. It gets the nutrients from here. Seagrasses are extremely important in ecosystem building because they create a structure. So in all these leaves, we can find tons of epiphytes that they will have this as a substrate and grow on the top. Fish that they are growing up, it's it serves them to hide, it serves them to eat, so it decrements the complexity of the ecosystem, created more surface where animals can live. Also because they use storage carbon. We're gonna dry it also. The flower here, the pompon, and the whole structure with the root. So lucky to find them fertile. So we have two species of fulva, a seagrass, two sheets, some focus brown, and some ceranium which is red. Before you press them, you need to take notes. You need to write where did you take it from. It had this color and it was fertile, it was not, it was a calm day, it was that year. It was on summer. All this metadata needs to be written somewhere because you'll forget. You categorize them taxonomically speaking. Maybe you don't know if it's, fu it's Fucus vesiculosus or Fucus spiralis or Fucus serratus, but you know at least it's Fucus. So when I go back to Spain in two or three months, I will hydrate them, cut them, and put them underneath the Kika's microscope. And I'll show you the pictures afterwards. So we are finished.